In this shift, we'll find out. Can you tell before someone hails you where they're gonna go? What happens when someone's credit card doesn't go through? Should we try again? And of course, will I get a going home job? Now to get started on my shift, I actually have to go for a bit of a hunt. Quiet, come on. The reason why you're pointing the wrong way, sir? All the way to North Audley Street, right by the Mayfair Chippy, where I pick up this job and it's going over to Harrods. Nice bread and butter stuff. Luckily, we're right on that junction of Green Street, so I can get my right into Green Street and work our way down the park lane, just do the usual shuffle down to Harrods. This gets me warmed up. Because it took me a bit of time to find this first job, I'm thinking I'm gonna jump straight onto the rank at Harrods if I can. I go around to the side door. It's a little bit slow today. It takes me about 11 minutes before I get this job going up to Seymour Place. It's pretty much a reverse of what I've done, although the route's slightly different. From here, I get into Hans Place and I'm following a cement truck. It's about to take a left turn into Hans Street, the road I was going to use, but I'm thinking I might get stuck behind that. So I come a little bit lower and get myself out onto Pont Street. From Pont Street, we run it all the way through to Chesham Place, go around Belgrave Square, and we're going to use Grosvenor Crescent to be able to exit out onto Hyde Park Corner. From here, it's just the usual job of going up Park Lane, But this time we're gonna go around Marble Arch, up Edgware Road a little bit, get a right into George Street, and then get our left into Seymour Place. Drop them off here, very nice. I'll be honest, by the time the end of the week comes round, I start to begrudge the job a little bit. It just gets a lot busier on the streets. You know, it just gradually gets a little bit more stressful as the week goes on. People have this notion that, you know, end of the week, Thursdays, Fridays, that everyone's out and about and there's so many people on the streets. So us cab drivers are raking it in. But I find it to be the opposite. Monday, I can get across the city. I can go where I like. By the end of the week, there's just so much traffic and congestion. And as a result, I can't get two jobs quick enough. So there's a lot of time in between jobs. And that, of course, then adds up to my potential earnings across the day. Give me a Monday any day of the week. I love driving on Mondays. But this is Thursday. Let's carry on. It takes me another 10 minutes or so before I get another job. I'm aiming for that Oxford Street, North Audley Street area again because I had a bit of luck there before. And at the last minute, I see this job come up. Annoyingly, I have a bit of a moany cab driver behind me. At first, I'm thinking that he's having a go at me because I might have nicked his job. But no, he's just having a go at me because I decide to pull over and pick up a job. By nature, my taxi has to pull in to the curb to pick people up and it's not always going to be the most optimum of circumstances. In an ideal world, I'd have plenty of space to pull in and not block traffic. In an ideal world, I'd also not pick up drunks. And ideally, I wouldn't have a cold. But there's always ways that we can mitigate these risks and prevent future headaches. I could work somewhere with wider streets. I could just not pick up drunks full stop. Or when it comes to my internet traffic, I could use NordVPN. NordVPN is the internet equivalent of being able to pre-check all your passengers before they get in the cab. Or it's like driving on a street without having to constantly worry about cyclists. Why? Because it masks your IP address, keeping your browser data hidden and protected from anyone who might be snooping on you. It also removes intrusive ads. NordVPN will save you money, which will easily cover the cost of subscription. Take my most recent use case as an example. I recently flew to Italy for my annual snowboarding trip. It's actually cheaper if you book those flights from Italy. The trouble is, is that it's expensive to go to Italy to do that. So you use NordVPN, put yourself in Italy with your IP address, and then you can book the flights and get the savings. And don't worry, using NordVPN is super simple. You just download the app on whichever device you want protection or the benefits of a VPN, sign in, hit quick connect, 
And there you go, you've got yourself enhanced security, protection, and all the other benefits of using a virtual private network. You can use it on up to six devices per account, so you can protect your laptop, your phone, iPad, whatever. Just go to nordvpn.com forward slash Tom the Taxi Driver to get their two year plan. Plus, with their recent Christmas deal, you'll be able to get four months entirely free of charge. Best of all, it's risk-free. NordVPN have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Just go ahead, the link is all in the description down below. Give it a go and get yourself protected. Now this job is going to the Cadogan Hotel on Sloan Street. Much like a repeat of the first job, the only difference is, is that we've come a little bit too far down North Audley Street. We've missed Green Street and we've missed Lee's Place. So the only option from here is to go around Grosvenor Square, then out onto Upper Grosvenor Street and under Park Lane. Now, of course, Grosvenor Crescent is once again shut, so I've got to go around High Park Corner into a bit of Knightsbridge. Knightsbridge is building up a bit, so I do a left at the Barclay Hotel, bringing this into Wilton Place. Use Wilton Crescent around Belgrave Square, Chesham Place going past the German Embassy on the north side, forward Pont Street, left into Sloan Street, and I drop them on the opposite side of the street to the hotel. It's a bit more of a hunt before I get to my next job, but I'm lucky to pick up these Americans who are by Buckingham Palace. They just want to go to the Waldorf Hotel, which of course is on the Aldwych, Waldorf Hilton. From here, if we draw it up on a map, it's a straight line. So we get going along. The Mall is the road that connects Buckingham Palace to Trafalgar Square. Now, of course, Trafalgar Square was the fortuitous battle where Lord Admiral Nelson, the man on top of the column, lost his life. And of course, you have to go through Admiralty Arch. So the Mall quite neatly connects the monarch to the achievements and the sacrifices of Lord Horatio Nelson, which is why when you go along the Mall, look at the black lamppost, and at the very top, you'll see little ships. These are Nelson's fleet. It's a bit busy on the lead up to Admiralty Arch, and that's because there's a lot of construction work going on for a luxury hotel that's going in here, which I think is actually owned by the Hilton Waldorf brand as well. So kind of a cool link on this run. We eventually get out onto the Strand, over the Old Witch, and set down quite neatly there. Luckily, it's not quite as bad before I get onto my next job. From the Old Witch, and this lady wishes to go to Wapping High Street. Almost exactly the same job I had yesterday, which was from the Strand to St. Catherine's Dock. Knowing that Thursday is probably going to be even worse than Wednesday, I still opt to go through the city. Super simple, we just get ourselves onto Fleet Street, over Ludgate Circus, up Ludgate Hill and towards St Paul's Churchyard, going past, of course, St Paul's Cathedral, forward into Cannon Street, forward into East Cheap, Great Tower Street, and then that eventually peels us out onto Tower Hill. Now, once I get into the highway, I opt to use Thomas More Street to get us down into Wapping High Street. Now, the lady in the back is pretty shocked when I tell her that I have to drop her in this particular location of Wapping High Street. If you look in front, you will see the signage for the Wapping Bus Gate, which as the name suggests, only buses and local residents are allowed into that bus gate. As it's between the hours of 4 p.m. and 7 p.m., I'm not allowed to go in there and I don't fancy a £60 fine. She has to walk the rest of the way, which as Wapping High Street is a good distance, could be a bit of a walk, especially if it's raining. On the way back in, and of course being school holidays, I think I'm gonna try the Tower of London. So I come down Byward Street and get a left into that part of Lower Thames Street. Unfortunately, the cab rank is pretty banged out. So I start heading my way west. I get ourselves up onto Newbridge Street and I'm wanting to get the left turn into Fleet Street, maybe trying sort of the Fetter Lane city area. But there's a lot of traffic going that way, including a lot of cabs. So I abide by the age old cabby principle. Pennies go left, pounds go right. Basically meaning don't follow a lot of cabs because the likelihood is you're not gonna get a job, they will. So if you pull off and go in a different direction, you've got that road all to yourself. So I got Farringdon Road, 
Check out this lady here. Now, before she hails me down, I have a premonition about where she might be going. And it pays off. She's going to Islington, Milner Square. Obviously, she's standing like in a quite a particular part of the road and presumably wants to go northbound because of the side of the road she's standing on. She could be going up to the Camden area. She could be going to Islington, maybe over into Hackney. But, you know, just judging and wild guess, Islington is what I go for. Milner Square is pretty easy to pull because it's the square above Gibson Square. Gibson Square is part of the very first run that we learn on the knowledge as would-be cab drivers. And to run it, I'm thinking, right, we just go up Farringdon Road. Rather than going all the way up and opting for Rosebury Avenue, as that can get a little bit busy in that direction, I take a right and go into the meat market. East Poultry Avenue, right into Charterhouse Street and left into St John Street. From here, it's just a straight line all the way up to Islington High Street. Gonna peel left into Liverpool Road and we'll set Milner Square that way. Upon dropping her off, I decide to come back via Upper Street. Bit more of a busy area. Sometimes you can get people going back in. It doesn't pay off. I go all the way back down the way I came, so all the way down St. John Street. And on the right into Clerkenwell Road, I get this job here. The gentleman wishes to go to Ebury Street in Pimlico. It's quite a bit of a boot at this time of day, but this is where knowledge steps in. It's pretty much an extension of one of the first few runs we learn on the knowledge, which is St. John's Square to St. James's Square. It's just a little bit of an extension at the end. You look at it on the map, this is how it looks. This just comes to me super simply. You just run it all the way down Clerkenwell Road, Theobald's Road. You get the left into Drake Street, Red Lion Square, Bish Bash Bosh. Go past that Sainsbury's, High Hoban, St. Giles High Street, into Shaftesbury Avenue. We're kind of beating the West End loading up times, so Shaftesbury Avenue isn't that bad. All the way through, peel left down into the Haymarket right onto Pall Mall, all the way on Pall Mall, and this is where we would normally set St. James's Square if we was doing the knowledge run. We go a little bit further, left into Marlborough Gate, Marlborough Road, right onto the Mall, round the Queen Victoria Memorial, the Spur Road, Birdcage Walk, buzz it out along Buckingham Palace Road. Buckingham Palace Road is really heavy for some reason. Again, it's just something about Thursdays and later on in the week that I just don't like. We'd run it all the way along, right at Assembly Place, and we just set on the corner here of Assembly Place and Ebury Street. Nice and simple. From here, I'm wanting to go to that Knights Bridge Belgravia area. Ever so lucky on the way back through, I get this job here off of the Harry Hotel. And they wish to go up to Selfridges. My stock method of dropping Selfridges is using the side door at Duke Street. Technically, it's a little bit further, but I find it always runs better than using Park Street. You also don't have to worry about, you know, setting down quite awkwardly on Oxford Street. This route at this time of day is a little bit slow. We know this, we've done this a million times before. Grosvenor Crescent, Park Lane, you come in at Upper Brook Street, forward into Grosvenor Square, get yourself a left into Duke Street, and then we can set down near there. As I'm setting down, someone does come over to the cab and wants to jump in. No, you see the taxis over there, sir? They're waiting for you, and there's some more down there. And the other thing to do as well is just to let that driver at the front of the rank know that there is a job nearby, just so they can keep an eye on any other cabbies you might sweep in and try and nick that job. I'm all right with this though, because I generally have a good bit of luck in the Wigmore Street area. And yes, I get this job, who wish to go to Embassy Gardens, Nine Elms, quite near the new American Embassy. That crazy development that's got that glass swimming pool that joins between the two buildings, that's Embassy Gardens. From where I am, I can very neatly cut into James Street. And I love this, because it's so much quicker than taking Orchard Street and coming down Green Street. Uh, pulls you out very neatly onto Brook Street. You go around Grosvenor Square, up a Grosvenor Street, and pull yourself out onto Park Lane. From Park Lane, getting down to the Nine Elms area, you just pretty much run it all the way down Vauxhall Bridge Road. 
pen it up on a map, it's basically a straight line. From where I am in Mayfair, it's going to be Vauxhall Bridge all day long. So Park Lane, High Park Corner, Grosvenor Place, Lower Grosvenor Place, go around the Bresden Place gyratory, left on the Vauxhall Bridge Road, going past Wicked, all the way out, over Vauxhall Bridge, around the Vauxhall gyratory, Leave that by Nine Elms Lane, left into Embassy Gardens, setting them here. Sometimes it's good to just park up and just wait a little bit in the Embassy Gardens area. Either an app job might go off or you might grab someone off the street because quite an affluent area and it's kind of marooned out of the way. So lots of people do get taxis to and from this location. Doesn't quite work for me, but it's always something worth bearing in mind. As I'm relatively close, I head over to the Iron Lung. No prizes for guessing what happens there. About 20 past 7, I have a little hunt on Victoria Street, even taking the initiative to do laps. It's not quite working for me. Is that slack period approaching early? Sometimes it's weird in the cab that you can go on a little bit of a roll and then no jobs, you just can't find something. I'm driving around the area and I see a little notification on my Twitter feed saying that Paddington is short of cabs. Well, I'm thinking I can go there, I can sit on the rank, have a little bit of a bite to eat, and then pick up a job afterwards. Unfortunately, when I get to Paddington, there is quite a lot of cabs on the rank, and it's not particularly moving fast either. Some 23 minutes or so at Paddington, and I finally get this job. Quite a few cases to load up, but they wish to go to Cloudsley Square, followed by Offord Road. This is, of course, back in the Islington direction. So, leave the Paddington Station forecourt, get ourselves a right into Bishop's Bridge Road, go around the roundabout. I love some of these jobs off of Paddington because it's just driving in a straight line for as long as possible until you need to get your way into Islington. It's a touch, I love these. Forward Marlebon Road. At the time of recording, the Euston cycle lane was still in place, so we're going to go over the Euston underpass, forward Euston Road, forward ourselves into Pentonville Road, get a left at the Lexington pub, leading us onto Penton Street, going past the TFL cycle hire scheme, and then we have to do that little wiggle into Cloudsley Square. Right Copenhagen Street, left Cloudsley Road, You can see how it gets a bit confusing in that area. There is a lot of squares all sandwiched in. So sometimes I'll have my cabbies made up because ah, just trying to remember all those nuanced little bits for something you don't drop that often can be a little bit confusing. So we just leave ourselves by left Barnsbury Street, right Thornhill Road, get a right onto Offord Road and then set down there. We're clear about 20 past eight. Now, coming back into town, I'm always going to stick it back on the big roads to try and hunt out a job. So I'm along Upper Street. Nice, busy neighbourhood. If anyone lives nearby, they're going to come out onto the main street if they want a taxi. Doesn't pay off for me, unfortunately. I get down to Rosebury Avenue and I'm thinking I'm going to go for a little walk. At the time of recording this, I was trying to get out of the cab and do a lot more steps. My average daily steps are about 3,000, 3,500 steps. I know, life of the cab driver. Something else to bear in mind as part of doing this job. Some 10 minutes go past, I hop back in. I have to go all the way to Shaftesbury Avenue before I pick up my next job. And this person wishes to go to Bickenall Street. Comes up quite easy because I think of Bickenall Street right at the top of Gloucester Place. You've got Bickenall Mansions as well. The issue is it's like a one-way road east. You kind of have to come along west and then come back in on yourself. My immediate thinking is I've got to get to the Marlebone High Street area, you know, like Paddington Street. And from where we're on Shaftesbury Avenue, the best way I can think of is going up via Wardour Street. We can forward into Burner Street. Left Mortimer Street, right into South Street. Left into Ryden House Street. And I love this because it goes over Great Titchfield Street and it comes out by the All Souls Church, Langham Place, you know, near the Langham Hotel and BBC Broadcasting House. We go up Portland Place 
and I'm going to get a left onto New Cavendish Street because that's going to neatly pull us into the Marlborough High Street area. By this time of night, you know, we're talking about half eight or so, Marlborough High Street is a lot more quieter and calmer. I definitely wouldn't want to be doing this kind of route in the day because it's a major high street. There can be a lot of traffic, deliveries, that kind of thing happening. Nice and clear for us, left into Paddington Street, go all the way through. Paddington Street becomes Crawford Street, gonna get ourselves right into Montague Mansions, left into York Street, right Gloucester Place, and then right into Bicknell Street. Easy. It's just gone nine o'clock and we could still be very firmly in that time that I like to dub as the slack period. It's when there's a lot of people in restaurants, in the theatres, so there's not much activity and action on the streets. Luckily, I go down Baker Street and just one minute later, I managed to pick up this job going down to Battersea Reach. Battersea Reach is one of those ones you can never forget as well because when I was on the knowledge, they made a documentary on Channel 4 about the world's toughest taxi test. And there was a guy on the knowledge who's out driving now uh, called Everton and he got asked Battersea Reach. I'm asked driving there to Battersea Reach. Battersea Reach, oh, uh, Juniper Drive one. That's it, yeah. So London Edition Hotel to Battersea Reach. So I think it's one of those points that's just always permanently ingrained. It's quite, you know, distinct on how you said it as well. Right by Wandsworth Bridge, or you can come in via York Road, Wandsworth. So from where we are, my main objective is I've got to get to Battersea Bridge. Why? Because I'm going to be setting from York Road, and to get the best way to York Road, I'm going to be coming in from Lombard, Battersea Church Road. That neatly pulls us to Battersea Bridge. So to get my way down to Battersea Bridge, well, not as ideal at the moment with Grosvenor Crescent being shut around Hyde Park Corner, and I'm gonna come in via Buckingham Palace Road. Forward it all the way out, right into Pimlico Road, continuing in that straight line, forward into Royal Hospital Road, and then from there, we get onto the Chelsea Embankment. You can take Albert Bridge for this, but I like Battersea Bridge just a little bit more. Couple of reasons. Firstly, you haven't got that width restriction on the bridge. And secondly, it sets us up very neatly for Battersea Church Road, which is the imperative route I'm gonna use, just neatens out that line on the map a little bit. Forward in Lombard Road, right York Road, and then you can't turn right into Battersea Reach. This is the restriction here. So on the knowledge, we used to go into Wandsworth Circus and then come back on yourself. Other options in real life could be come over Wandsworth Bridge, get the left into York Road and come that way. But as a working taxi driver, I'll let you cheat in whatever way possible. It's a bit of a drive back and I deviate from my usual route in. I'd normally be heading in like the Sloan Square direction. But the marvellous world of Twitter has told me that the Royal Albert Hall is about to pop. So I head in that direction, get ourselves on the Queen's Gate, and I'm lucky to pick up on Prince Consort Road. This job is going to King's Cross Station. Now from where we are, the map route would say all the way through the Shaftesbury Avenue and through the West End. We're fast approaching 10 o'clock, and on a Thursday night, that would probably be suicide. So I'm thinking I'm going to circumnavigate the West End. We're pretty much pointing into Hyde Park. A quick check on traffic conditions tells me that Hyde Park isn't that bad going northbound. So I go north, get ourselves through the park, pull ourselves out on the Bayswater Road. And then I want to get ourselves onto Sussex Gardens. Why? Because that will set us up for Old Marlebone Road and we're up high into Marlebone Road. We're safe, we can get into that bus lane real away from the chaos of the West End. This route isn't gonna look pretty on a map, but it just shows you that in the cab there is never one ideal route that you always pick. It's always varied depending on the time of day, the type of passengers you've got, and of course, where you may start from. Euston Overpass, Euston Road. left into Pancras Road, and then yeah, we can set down King's Cross there. As I'm setting King's Cross, it's that most wondrous time of the evening where you realize there is no cabs on the rank at King's Cross. Dutch. So as soon as I drop off, I'm very quick to get to the front of the rank. 10 past 10, maybe I'll get someone going in the westward direction. No, 
this gentleman wants to go to Canary Wharf. Thankfully, at this time of night, getting out to Canary Wharf is pretty much a doddle. It's a real easy route. You don't have to really think about it, and there's not too much deviation you need to take from it. Annoyingly, en route, he's got a McDonald's bag, and I've got upholstered seats, and he's got the McDonald's bag sat on the seat. I've had it before where the grease actually drips through the bag, and then, of course, it stains the seats. I know, I should have got the leather option, whatever. Hindsight's a fabulous thing. I'm kind of a bit of a people pleaser, and I said, look, would you mind taking the McDonald's bag off the seat? But in the process, I'm kind of like, you can eat it if you want. Presumably he's traveled back from somewhere. He's wearing a suit, he's going over to Canary Wharf and he's got a McDonald's bag. That kind of says to me that this guy has probably had a really long day. Normally I'm not one to do this because of course it stinks out the back of the cab and it's not a pleasant experience for the next passengers. But knowing it's near the end of the night, it's just a nice kind of gesture and just humanizes that cab experience a little bit more. So the route's simple. We run it all the way out, Pennantville Road, City Road, comply by the Old Street roundabout, leave that by Old Street. That then bears right into Great Eastern Street. Forward Commercial Street, left Whitechapel High Street, right Commercial Road, buzz it all the way out. Right Butcher Row, left into the Limehouse Link Tunnel, exit off for the Isle of Dogs, do a right into West Ferry Road, and we're going to go underneath the West Ferry Road roundabouts and use underneath so we don't have to go through the security checkpoint at the top. That's the next roundabout. Exit off by Marsh Wall, right into Mask Makers Road, left Lightman's Road, and then right into Mill Harbour. After dropping him, I decide to have a quick scout in the back of the cab, just make sure it smells okay in case I pick up another passenger. Mill Harbour, bollocks. This is effectively Canary Wharf. So, Canary Wharf's all that fun stuff up there. Oh, it doesn't smell too bad in there. It's nearly 11 o'clock, and there's a man who likes to be home in bed by 12, and bear in mind I live out west. I don't think I'm gonna be home at 12. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Right, now my plan is to get back into center, I guess. Um, hopefully pick up something along the way. What always surprises me is leaving Canary Wharf and then going back into town. It's not actually that long of a drive before you're picking up again. In this case, just nine minutes until I'm picking up on the highway. These people want to go to Western Street, Bermondsey. Now they've told me they've actually come from Wapping High Street. Lo and behold, even though it's quite late at night, they're struggling to get a cab in Wapping High Street. And I think that's one of the biggest issues with the Wapping bus gate. It kind of like deletes that area of London from the mind of cab drivers. You're thinking, well, there's a bus gate there. I don't want to go near that area. So even though we're long after the seven o'clock time when the bus gate finishes, you kind of need it as part of like your, your regular habit. Because of the whole bus gate thing, you think, well, why should I? Like they prevent our access from going in there. I'm just going to head back to the West End. The route to Western Street initially froze me. Very rarely do I get hailed down in this area and then of course go into somewhere like Bermondsey. But of course, when you work out the logical options you can do to get there, there's only one way of doing it. And that is of course going over Tower Bridge. Forward into Tower Bridge Road, we get ourselves into that last little bit of Grange Road, Bermondsey Street, going around Bermondsey Square, left into Long Lane, do a right before the Sainsbury's, and that then of course is Western Street. It's getting late and I don't think I'm going to be home for midnight. So I head along, I get to Suffolk Street and I actually have a cabbie hail me down. This cabbie's actually getting some charge there for his electric cab. And he lets me know that there's a couple of ladies who wish to go to Halston. This is a real touch. I think they're relatively new to London because I don't think they've got sort of quite context of where it is. Maybe they're staying at Friends in Halston. But from here, we just want to use big roads to get out. So we go all the way along Suffolk Street. I'm going to get a right onto Blackfriars Bridge, New Bridge Street, Ludgate Circus, Farringdon Road, Kings Cross Road, all the way up, getting ourselves out onto the Euston Road. From here, nice, easy, straight line. We're gonna go all the way along into Marlebone Road, over the Marlebone Road flyover, peel off though, because we wanna get ourselves onto Harrow Road. Harrow Road is gonna very neatly continue our way out into Halsden. So Harrow Road goes forward into High Street Halsden, 
Ford Manor Park Road, go around the Burger King by getting a left in the Tavistock Road, and then follow it right into Craven Park Road. I've had their postcode to get to this point anyway, because there could be like a real nitty gritty little street in Halston that I would never have known. Anyway, we get them there. It's actually a bit of a trouble on the credit card. To decline. Should we, should, we, should we try again? It takes quite a few goes for the credit card to go through. No, that one's not gone through either. I generally try not to panic at this point. There's always a way around something. Yep, all good, perfect. That one's good. It's a bit annoying because it takes a little bit of time, but it's better than not being paid altogether. We're done and I'm gonna head home. If you want a little bit more from me, then I'd highly recommend subscribing to my Sunday summary email. It is a weekly update of what I am up to in the cab and out of the cab as well. Bit of a behind the scenes for this channel. You can subscribe to that over here. See you all again soon. Bye-bye.